there is something frightening yet mesmerizing about a wall of water gushing down a valley, destroying any and everything in its path. Such is the catastrophe of nature known as a flood. It can turn the most peaceful looking watercourse into a raging torrent capable of unimaginable devastation. The tallest building may prove no resistance to its force, and human lives and food crops can be completely wiped out. In this feature, we will explore this fury of nature and its impact on man and the environment. Severe floods in one country are sure to make world news headlines because of the destruction they cause to human life and property. According to the World Meteorological Organization, during 2002, floods in over 80 countries caused damage and disruption to the lives of over 17 million people within an eight-month period. The worst flood in recorded history occurred in China in 1931, when the Yellow River, also known as the Huanghe River, overflowed its banks, claiming the lives of an estimated 1 to 2 million people. In July 2007, massive floods in East India and Bangladesh resulted in over 1,000 deaths, 5 million displaced people, over 800,000 houses destroyed, and 88 million US dollars in agricultural damage. Within the last five years, we have had a number of events um, stretching from as far south as Guyana to as far north as, say, Cuba. In particular, we had, um, say, uh, about 20 storms occurring uh, that have created um, severe infrastructure destruction, especially roads, bridges, culverts, and some deaths. A survey done by the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CIDAMA, in 2001, revealed that floods are the most frequent type of disaster worldwide. Even more surprising is the finding that, while flooding is the most frequent hazard, occurring in 90% of CIDAMA's 16 member states, only 75% of those countries had flood contingency plans in place. Floods are natural occurrences that happen when heavy rainfall fills rivers and streams above their normal capacity, or when coastal tides cause water levels to rise or surge. Simply put, a flood is an overflow of water that submerges the surrounding land. Floods can be categorized according to their duration. Flash floods occur and subside within minutes or a few hours after heavy rainfall, or due to the failure of dams or embankments. These floods can cause great damage because there is little time to prepare. Rapid onset floods also occur when water levels rise suddenly, but they usually last for one or two days. Like flash floods, they are difficult to predict and to take preventative action to reduce losses. With slow onset floods, water levels take a while to build up before overflowing. These floods develop slowly, sometimes over a period of days, and may last for weeks or even months. As this kind of flood lasts for a long period, its damaging effects are extensive and prolonged. Another type of flood is coastal flooding, which is caused by extreme tides and waves. These floods are associated with storms, hurricanes and tsunamis. While floods are a natural occurrence, and many of us would seek to protect ourselves and our property from the damage caused, humans are often responsible for the flooding in the first place. Human activities play a major role in the increased occurrence of flooding the world has experienced in recent years. How is this? Well, let's take a look. The area of land that catches rainfall and allows it to drain into a stream, river, lake, swamp or underground source and eventually the ocean is known as a watershed. The rate at which rainfall infiltrates soil and seeps downwards into groundwater significantly affects the probability of flooding. Several factors affect the infiltration rate, including soil type, topography, climate and vegetative cover. 
Drainage of rainfall through the soil is also aided by the activity of burrowing animals, insects and earthworms. Vegetation in a watershed helps to reduce flooding. Trees and plants capture and buffer the impact of rain droplets before they scatter the grains of soil on the ground. The roots of plants act to stabilize soil so that it does not wash away. The roots also create air spaces which make place for rainwater to occupy. When trees are cut down and plants uprooted, the roots are no longer there to absorb rainfall. As a result, there is more water flowing over the surface of the land. These factors result in soil erosion and siltation of rivers and streams. This reduces the amount of water that these waterways can hold and causes flooding. Other contributors to flooding are agricultural practices such as slash and burn and over-cultivation on hillsides which result in the loss of vegetation and soil erosion. Continuous population growth is another factor in increased flooding. Some areas that were, never, were not flood-prone areas before are now becoming flood-prone areas because of other factors like urbanization. You find that the hillsides have been cleared for housing, both planned and unplanned. And um, the erosion that is taking place is bringing down a lot of sediment. That sediment is being deposited in the riverbed and it is changing the carrying capacity of the river, especially some of the tributaries. In addition, we have um, poor terracing of the land when it is cleared for housing or agriculture. So you find that um, the water runs off very quickly from the upper portion of the catchment right into the lower portion at a very rapid rate. We are also seeing in some of these areas where people, the, the, you know, are building within the, the floodplain. So they are, they are changing the, 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 the meandering or the, 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 the river course such that it is affecting the river ability to carry that water down to the sea. So um, we also have, um, because of the heavy sediment building up at the mouth of the river, um, sandbars created so that when the tide comes in, it takes a longer time for the water to go back out, to recede, and therefore it restricts the flow of the river and therefore it backs up within the catchment. Along coastal areas, the destruction of mangrove forests and their conversion to built-up areas also increase the likelihood of floods. Mangrove plants act as natural buffers against storms, so that the effect of storm surges on the land is lessened. The plants also act as sponges for flood water, as excessive runoff can be drained into mangrove swamps. These plants also reduce the polluting effect of flooding on the ocean by acting as a filter that cleanses the water before releasing it. And then there is the dumping into our rivers and drains of everything from cars to refrigerators to household garbage. A sad practice that leads to reduced drainage capacity and of course flooding when the rainy season comes. Flooding can have devastating and widespread impact on man and the environment. Primarily, there is the tragic loss of human lives. An entire season of crops can be destroyed and livestock washed away by raging floodwaters, leading to food shortages and a staggering rise in food prices. Flood damage also leads to the spread of diseases. As water flows over an area, it can pick up all sorts of waste, chemicals and pollutants such as carcasses, which can contaminate food and water supplies and cause outbreaks of waterborne diseases like cholera and dysentery. Another serious impact on flooding is the damage to homes and buildings beyond repair. There is also the danger of explosions and fires from leaking gas lines, as well as an increase in pests, vermin and other dangerous animals that have been flooded out of their habitats. Severe flooding can also cause extensive damage to roads, bridges and public utilities, disrupting power to essential services such as water and electricity supply and preventing emergency personnel from reaching people in need of help. 
there are some proven strategies to help prevent and reduce the impact of floods and these strategies can be either in the form of flood control or flood management. As part of flood management, another measure is the regular cleansing of drains and water channels. Worldwide, there is a change of focus from flood control towards flood management. Those flood management strategies, they uh, are based on a certain acceptance that floods do take place. They will include measurements like uh, early warning systems, evacuation plans, uh, they will um, they include the acceptance that, uh, of different flood risks for different areas where you can have a higher flood risk for an agricultural area than, a, than an urban area. Uh, two examples of flood management strategies are the compartmentalization of areas where you accept certain areas to, uh, uh, to flood before other ones do which means that certain areas you have to evacuate before you have to uh, evacuate the other areas. Um, another strategy is to um, design green rivers. Uh, green rivers uh, take floodwaters during extreme discharges. So generally they, are, uh, uh, they don't convey any water, but during extreme events uh, it's better to know where the water flows than uh, just uh, have uh, extensive flooding taking, taking place. With regard to buildings and roads, regulations governing how these are constructed and what types of materials are used to build them should be established and enforced. These include building on stilts and using materials strong enough to withstand the pressure of high volumes of flowing water. Farmers should also practice crop rotation to maintain soil fertility and construct terraces to reduce erosion. We can prepare for flood events by contacting our local Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management for tips on preparing emergency kits and developing evacuation plans. It is also important that we purchase flood insurance for our homes and businesses. It is very difficult to come after the fact to correct some of the problems. There are a number of initiatives being implemented both in Trinidad and in throughout the region. The Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency is also very much involved and they are trying very hard to get countries like Belize, Guyana, um, St. Vincent, Barbados, Trinidad to come together and share their experiences and to develop systems that can be spread throughout the Caribbean, that can work within the Caribbean. And these are some of the initiatives that need to be expanded, especially the use of the community and involving the community in some of these initiatives and also to provide um, an awareness of what is required, what has to be done and how they can play their part in alleviating some of the anthropogenic activities that impact on flooding. As we conclude, remember that although floods are primarily natural events, human activity also influences the frequency and severity of this natural hazard. So, our best defenses against flooding are caring for our environment so that we don't make flooding worse and preparedness to reduce harmful effects on ourselves and our families.